Hey guys, Tristan here, and with news getting around that the Mouse House Disney has acquired 20th Century Fox in a 60 plus billion dollar buy, what does this mean for Marvel? Well, they get access to more of their own comic book universe, of course. We're in the golden age of comic book movies. I remember a time when we would be lucky to get one major comic book movie every couple of years. Now we're getting three, four a year. The influx of comic book movies hitting the big screen has been a dream come true for many fans. One of the most enjoyable things about the new revolution of comic book movies is that the studios are no longer interested in doing one and done standalone movies for their own characters. Now every studio is building towards their own cinematic universe where characters from one movie can appear in other movies as well. This brings movies a little closer to what happens in the comic books. It's not unusual to be reading the Spider-Man comic and Daredevil pops in for a panel or two. Teams like the Avengers have a consistently changing roster with characters like Wolverine, Spider-Man along with others making up the roster. This trend of putting different characters in a shared movie universe is one that has shown its potential. However, it does reveal one of the biggest and most confusing issues with these movies, and that's the characters' movie rights and who has them. Well, let's find out why this became a weird, confusing mess, shall we? It started in December of 1996. Marvel filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection, trying to save themselves from going under. And in 1998, Marvel began licensing their rights to put some of its characters in films to other studios. Marvel first licensed the film rights to the character Blade to New Line Cinema. Soon after, 20th Century Fox got the license for X-Men and then Sony got the film rights to Spider-Man. By 2004, Marvel Studios realized that they were only getting a fraction of the money these other studios were making off of their characters. Marvel Studios secured money to be able to produce its own film showing the best depiction of Marvel comic stories on the big screen. Here is a graph in 2014 of who had what at the time. I guess we can start with 20th Century Fox and what they had at the time. Here is a weird tidbit for you guys. Fox didn't actually own the Fantastic Four's film rights, but Constantine Films bought the film rights for the characters in 1986 and every other character associated with them like Silver Surfer and Galactus. A low budget film was produced in 1992 by New Horizon Studios owned by Roger Corman. In 2004 with the distribution deal from 20th Century Fox which kind of made the Fantastic Four theirs in a weird way but all this has potentially changed as of 2017. As for the characters they have their movie rights to let's start with the X-Men and by extension every other character that was introduced in X-Men lore so far. Characters like Wolverine who originally wasn't a part of the X-Men fell under the umbrella after being reworked as a mutant in the comics. Also the Quicksilver Scarlet Witch deal was also like this as these two characters were in Avengers before becoming mutants in X-Men comics. So that was a little loophole that allowed Marvel access to them. Another was Daredevil. The film began development in 1997 at 20th Century Fox and Columbia Pictures before New Regency acquired their rights in 2000, which it released in February of 2003 to mix reviews and the spin-off series Elektra, which didn't help Fox either with tanking at the box office. And in April of 2013, Daredevil and its characters reverted back to Marvel and Disney. Spider-Man's film rights has been bounced around from studio to studio since the late 1970s, but Columbia Pictures has been trying to acquire Spidey's rights since 1989, which they finally succeeded 10 years later in 1999. This means every character that was or will become in Spidey's lore, Sony has them for now. But in February of 2015, Sony and Marvel worked out a deal to share Spidey in the MCU. After Spider-Man's success, they went after Ghost Rider in 2002, after being in development hell since 1992, but after two bombs at the box office, Ghost Rider went back to Marvel in 2013 along with another street level hero. Sony had acquired the rights to Luke Cage in 2003. With the movie in development hell for over a decade with nothing to show for it, Luke Cage's film rights reverted back to Marvel along with the Punisher. Marvel had Blade in development as early as 1992, but Blade was eventually set up at New Line Cinema. Originally, New Line wanted to make Blade into the same light of a spoof. Luckily, we didn't get that, but in 2013, Blade's rights reverted back to Marvel. For the Jolly Green Giant, Hulk's rights were a little tricky with Universal Pictures, originally having the film production rights to him since 1992 after the TV series, but after 2003's Hulk, those reverted back to Marvel. And since then, what this means is that Marvel can make a movie with the Hulk in it, but Universal has film distribution rights, which are the rights to actually put the film into theaters. They make the film prints of the film, they make the deals with the theaters, and they make the final call on the release date of the film and how the film is released. Universal Pictures obtained the film rights to Neymar in 2001, but with constant setbacks pushing the film from 2004 to 2007, it never came to be. In 2012, Joe Quesada thought Neymar's film rights had reverted back to Marvel, but in August of 2013, it was revealed 
by Kevin Feige that this was not the case and the rights remained at Universal Pictures. On June 3rd, 2014, Boris Kitt confirmed that Marvel Not Universal has the Namor film rights, but Feige said in an interview that the Namor film rights are not with Universal or Legendary Pictures, but he explained that there are contracts and deals that need to be sorted out first. So you can say Marvel kinda definitely has Namor back once the paperwork has been sorted out. Now we come to Man Thing, and in 2000, Marvel Entertainment entered a joint venture agreement with artists and entertainment to turn at least 15 Marvel superhero franchises into live action films, television series, direct video films, and internet projects. These franchises include an adaptation of Man Thing. On October 27, 2003, it was reported that artists and entertainment, which had partnered with Marvel Enterprises, was being purchased by Liongate Films. In February of 2004, the film production and distribution company Lionsgate merged with Artisan Entertainment and received the film rights to Man Thing. It had originally been scheduled for a release date on August 27, 2004. The US release date was set for Halloween, October 31st of that same year. But when Marvel released its second quarter financial report, Man Thing was included in the 2005 lineup and a release date to be decided. Reportedly, the film was so bad that the test audiences walked out before the film finished. So Marvel put it back on video in the United States since it would not be bankable in a domestic release. Now in 2017 with the deal acquiring 20th Century Fox, Marvel Studios has gotten most of their universe back besides sharing Hulk and his universe with Universal Pictures and Spider-Man and his universe with Sony. Marvel is in position to dominate with different genre of movies with many other characters that the public may not know about. The possibilities are endless. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.